This is Ground Affected. My name is your dad, and in this video I'm going to be painting Storm, which was sculpted and offered up by CA3D Studios. While you are watching this video, make sure to consider leaving some words of uh, comments in the little square box down below, which YouTube offers you to leave some words of comments. Also click like and subscribe, uh, let's get on with painting Storm. Now since this model has a cape, this is the bane of all 3D printers existence and this means a lot of sandpapering before I get to start the project. And uh, for this particular technique you're going to need some sandpaper, you'll need some paper variety and some sponge variety. I use the Tamiya sponge and I use I think it's 1200 grit, that's for the final finish of the model. And I've sprayed this model specifically with the white that comes from Citadel, Wraithbone white as it is called. And the reason that I've used this is because I need a primer before I start to paint the model, but painting this black would be making my life very difficult. Let's just talk about the base, and for the base I printed this in clear or technically transparent resin and I then used this smoky Lexan paint essentially used for RC car bodies to tint just a section of the base. Then I opened up my wet palette and pulled out some paint to start working on the rest of the model. Now you saw that I had originally painted this with that uh, Wraithbone white. What I did was actually used a couple of metallic colours to get to the white that we're using in the this image that you are seeing upon your screen. Now I painted a couple of things out of order here and this is gonna make no sense to anybody however I needed to add this part in the video otherwise my video would be too short and so this is why we're watching this right now. Now of course you're gonna see these uh, things come up later on when I paint the body however you can see me doing it on the small part which makes it a bit easier to record as the body is so big it doesn't fit inside of my camera recording space area. That symbol that goes on a chest, I painted with the reds first because it was a white base, this was super easy. I then used black to go over and shape everything around the edges and I painted everything after that with a clear lacquer. This is a very clear lacquer, it is shiny and it makes the thing look shiny. I don't know why but I felt like this needed to look shiny, a suit in images kind of looks metallic, I don't know what it's made of, it is definitely shiny and uh, so I made it shiny. This video was sponsored by CA3D Studios. They are a Patreon over on Patreon where they sculpt every month six or seven different models and you can then subscribe to their Patreon and get these models for 3D printing for yourself. If you enjoy this model that you see in this video, you can get that model from CA3D Studios if you look in the link in the description for their Patreon. This particular model, the Storm, was part of their VIP package? I don't know what you want to call it. It is part of their package which is called VIP. Make sure to check that out in the link in the description down below. And let's get back into painting Storm over the X-Men type variety. For the portrait of this uh, wonderful storm lady, I'm going to paint an undercoat with some white first. I painted her head black first and then I used white to give it a volumetric highlight or zenithal or whatever you want to call this. Now getting back to the suit and those metallics that I was talking about earlier, I used a very dark metallic in the shadows of all the suit areas. So I had first thinned this down and sprayed it over everything that was going to be in shadow. I then used a metallic medium, which technically is just white metal paint, and I sprayed that over everything from the top. This was just to give it a bit of a smoothed effect over that horrible dark silver that I put down which made spotting all over the place but not to worry because now I came back in with white and I actually sprayed the highest parts of this model this was when I started painting in some of the details and uh, wear a glove if you're gonna paint a white character you're gonna have a sad time I had to go back and respray this part because I didn't wear a glove 
forget all of that, let's just get straight into painting her face and I'm gonna use the same skin tone set that I use on all my other models just to make this simple for those who do follow me. But this time, instead of using the reddish flesh as the base, I'm actually going to use the darkest brown that's in that set, and I'm going to use the reddish flesh as my mid-tones. I'm then going to take a dark brown, which is not from that set, but you can just use any dark brown that you have, and thin this down quite a lot, and spray this from the shadows, mostly covering up the black that was there. It unfortunately is too desaturated if you leave the black in the shadows, so I use the dark brown to bring in some saturation into the piece. I then work my way up through the skin tone set as I do normally with any other skin tone. Although I do want to make sure not to take away too much of those lovely warm rich browns that I've left in the shadows. You still want some bright highlights because its skin still has highlights whether it's dark or light. Now I need to add a little bit of life into the skin and at first I'm going to add a very very thin layer of yellow over the top. This just gives it, I don't know, it just makes it feel more skin like. I'm then going to paint her lips using reddish flesh and also paint the inside of her mouth before I paint her teeth white. You can see that I have painted one of the eyes and eyebrows. Do you ignore that. That it happened off camera, but it, just ignore it. Pretend that I didn't do that, I will show you it later. Now, going back to the body, remember I said I ruined it? I did ruin it, and so I had to repaint everything that I had painted before. And painting this gold was, again, another mistake that I made. I've still yet to find a gold that goes down in one coat and smooth. And unfortunately, this greedy gold that I used does not go down smooth. So this meant that I had to do multiple coats. And once I had done that, I sprayed it with clear lacquer and left it to dry and worked on the wings. I glued arms and the wings and the friggin' cape together. I don't even know what you want to call it, but I glued them together to do this process because I had no other idea of how I could do this. And I did the same painting process as I did on the body by painting the dark first, then the medium, which was the metallic, and then the whites. And then I came back in with a brush and very carefully painted the trims along the edge of this wonderful cape. I'm calling it wonderful because I was very upset with the cape. This cape was really difficult to paint, but if you take your time, a little bit of patience, you can get it right just like I did. Working on the skins, I needed to come back in and add a little bit of blush on the cheeks. So I used this Magos Purple thinned down quite a lot through the airbrush and on a very low pressure and carefully sprayed that over her cheeks to give some blush to them. I then worked on the eyes, like I said I never did it before, I'm doing it now and I'm showing you how I did it, it's just black, it's really easy, I paint them black first and then I use an off white over the inside and with Storm she doesn't have irises so you don't even have to worry, once you've done painting the whites, you're done painting the eyes. I then used that same off white to paint her eyebrows and uh, that's pretty much uh, that for her face. Working on her hair, I used deck tan to paint over everything and this was just uh, probably two, maybe three layers over the top. I used water to thin it down so it went down nice and smooth and I painted this over every single last bit of hair that I could possibly get my brush to. And once I was done with that, I gave it a white highlight. I used the airbrush to spray very carefully over the edges and give some highlight to that hair. I then glued her cool little fringe back into the forehead of her face. And that pretty much concludes the face. The only thing that's left to do is paint the gold over her earrings that are dangling by her wonderful ears and glue her pip onto her neck hole. And call this model done. I hope that this video helped you make or paint or just get over 
five to ten minutes of your life. Of course, if this video helped you, make sure to leave some words in the little square box that YouTube gives you to leave some words in, and uh, consider giving a subscription, because the more subscribers I get, the more subscribers I will have. Also, we are at the part of the video where I want to say special thank you to my patrons for keeping the lights blind in my eyeballs, and the video is continually able to be made. Words get really hard towards this part of the video, and so I may stumble upon them sometimes. But one thing that I cannot stumble upon is the new Patreons that I got this week, and I'd like to thank them right meow. David Bailey and David Tarrant. This week we only allowed Davids to join, next week anybody can join. Please, if you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is watch another video. Of course, if you can support the channel financially in any way, it is only at £2 a month at minimum, or you can spend more if you want. I'm not asking you to spend any money, but if you can, it would be really, really helpful to the channel, and uh, I would be very grateful for that kind of uh, contribution. Now, we get to say the best thing ever. I have to go the entire video without swearing until this part of the video, and that is when I get to tell you that if you didn't like anything you saw in this video or any of the other videos, I don't really care, and I would kindly ask you to f off. And now, even though I have a studio, I still need to find a place to fit another model. Where?